Morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Friday. Happy Friday. Today is Friday, the 7th of April, 2023. I hope that you're safe and healthy today and that your family is safe and healthy and that the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field who, along with the first responders, are every day saving lives. And those also who pick up garbage for us to keep streets and sidewalks, parks clean and disease free and trash free. And those also that make deliveries such as food and water and mail for our deliver for our convenience. Double blessings on the men and women that are out here trying to help rescue and deliver the victims that are the teenagers and the children of child molestation and pedophilia. There are also victims of prostitution, child prostitution, pornography, child pornography. Human trafficking, sex slavery, double curses on the perpetrators of these things, double curses on the profiteers of these things, and double curses on the perverts that create the industry. Finally, blessings on the homeless. Nearly 600,000 men, women, and children who are homeless, mostly children in the United States, millions around the world in similar or worse conditions, blessings upon them for theirs is the kingdom. Basketball game is scheduled tonight. The New York Knicks will be playing in New Orleans against the Pelicans. The Pelicans have a lot to play for. I mean, I shouldn't say a lot because the Pelicans right now are 41 and 39. Of course, taking into consideration no Zion Williamson for most of the season. Um, they're doing pretty good. The young players are coming along, like Trey Murphy III, who, again, I liked a lot coming out of Virginia. Uh, that was the same year we got Grimes. Um, I had Trey Murphy III rated ahead of Grimes. I don't know about that anymore. Uh, obviously, aside, I might be a little prejudiced, but I do think that Grimes plays a more NBA-ready, complete game right now in his second year than Trey Murphy. But that's no slight on Trey Murphy. Trey Murphy, I thought coming out of college, was going to be an excellent defender. He is a three-point spot of shooter. He is. And he's shown a little bit of playmaking himself. Not as good quite as our Grimes, but pretty darn good. So um, with him now inserted into the starting lineup, uh, and then the uh, surprise, which they, you know, Herbert Jones, where they you know, they picked him out of, out of Alabama, and he was, I think he was a second rounder. Um, very little offense, but he has turned into a decent offensive player, and he's always been an excellent defender. So they have defenders on the floor um, around Zion when Zion is able to play, but not Grant, Brandon Ingham is also playing at a high level. Valanchunas, of course, a big in the middle type dude, slow footed, um, but you know he he's big. He's a rebounder. He's tough. Um, you know, roughneck type guy. And so they, they really do have a nice squad. And so right now, they with two games left in the season, they can finish no worse than 500. They're 41 and 39. So they actually can finish no worse than 500. Um, but the, the caveat is right now in the, in the Western Conference, they are tied with the Lakers for the seventh seed. They are one game behind the Golden State Warriors and the Clippers for the fifth and the sixth seed. So these four spots, between five, six, seven, and eight, are not set in stone right now. See, anything could happen. And even Minnesota has a chance, but we'll talk about that in a second. So uh, the Pelicans, if they win their next two games, have a good shot of getting into the top six, and that's what they're playing for. They're pretty much uh, locked in to a, a play-in spot, but they need to try to win both of their games in order to get up in that top six and you know, avoid the play in. Um, and so the Lakers have the same thought, the Warriors and the Clippers. Everybody has the same thought. So they have a lot to play for tonight. They're going to be really coming hard to try to, um, you know, beat the Knicks tonight because that's one of their last two games, which is excellent. And why do I say that? Because if, um, Tom plays the same unit for tonight. I would rather him sit Mitchell Robinson um, and start um, Isaiah Hartenstein and then have Jericho Sims come in behind Hartenstein and, and, and Mob D. Um, I'd rather that, but um, 
because that would also be good for Hartenstein because Valanchun is a big physical um, center. So it would be good to, to see us really playing. It's not like a meaningless end of the season game. These guys need to win this game, and they're going to be trying to win this game. Particularly, I'd like to see OB, IQ, and, Do uh, and Grimes. I'd like to see Deuce redeem himself. And so, uh, but I think Deuce will be fine. It's just that um, somebody mentioned too, he doesn't play well with Fournier because Fournier plays no defense. But it wasn't that. That wasn't the reason. He just didn't play well. And McConnell just gives him problems. It's just as simple as that. Every player, even Michael Jordan. Like I, li I like to bring up the Michael Jordan situation to show you no player is completely invincible. Okay? No player is completely in invincible. Every player in the NBA has that guy that, for whatever reason, gives them trouble. Okay? Uh, everybody in the NBA has that. There's a guy that forever, for whatever reason, gives that player a lot of trouble. For Deuce McBride, it's T.J. McConnell. <laughs> it's T.J. McConnell for Deuce McBride. That's just, you know, how it is. So um, for, for, for Jordan, many of y'all might know this. If you remember back in the 80s, it was Rod Strickland. Jordan did not want to see Rod Strickland. Okay, Rod Strickland would have some of his best games against Michael Jordan. And that's weird, isn't it? And now Rod Strickland could play now. There's no doubt. But Michael Jordan, <laughs> that was the guy that would really have his good best games against, against Michael Jordan. So everybody has that guy. And there's no really reason for it. It just is what it is. For Deuce, it's TJ McConnell. So I think he'll be better tonight. Um, I'd like him to get 20 minutes you know, and see what happens. But I think what's going to happen is Deuce is not going to be in the rotation for the playoffs. So Tom is probably trying to focus on the players. He's going to, I don't know why people think, but he's going to go with the nine men that he's been going with, you know, for the playoffs. It's going to be the starting five, Hartenstein, Hart, uh, IQ, and Obi. You're going to still have the same guy. Um, and you're still going to have the same minutes distribution. You're going to have Randall playing 35 minutes, and you're going to have whatever leftover minutes going to Obi. That's just it's going to be that. But tonight, you know, and you never know, you know, hopefully Randall comes back. But if he doesn't, you want Obi to be ready to step in and start. So that's why it's a it's a good game tonight for, for the Knicks to, to see how they are and how they second unit plays. We just whooped on Indiana the other day. Let's see how they do against New Orleans, a desperate team that needs this win. I'm not going to be able to see the game, obviously, tonight at Shabbat, but I'll be watching it for sure to replay tomorrow on my big screen. So it's going to be fun to see. Um, yeah, no no Zion uh, for them tonight. No Alvarado. Uh, I don't know what's happening with Alvarado, but they said he will be re-examined. It was back in 22nd of March. They said he'll be re-examined in two or three weeks. So that was 22nd of March. That means this week or next week, he should be re-examined. He'll probably be ready for the playoffs. They need him for the playoffs. Uh, and then there's the rookie, EJ Liddell, who is out, but he's on a two-way contract. Um, anyway, so um, the Knicks is going to have a good test today. Uh, I'm expecting them to do pretty well. They're way away from home. But, you know, for, for Mitch Rob, that is home. You know, Mitch Rob's from Louisiana. So for him, that is home. Uh, Randall's not in the trip, but, you know, he spent uh, at least a season down there, I know. So um, th there's some guys that are familiar with New Orleans, but I don't think Randall's making this trip today. But for, for Mitch Rob, he's home. So he may want to play just to, to show what he could do, you know, in front of his peoples. Uh, <laughs> We'll see what happens. But um, if he does, we just don't want Mitch Rob to get hurt. You know, obviously, um, but I do want to see Obi Grimes and Quick against this desperate team, a good team, uh, and see how they can perform. I'm very confident in those three. I know they could do their thing against anybody. I really do. I don't think there's any team in the league that we really got for for those three. If the Knicks were to be able to keep all three of these guys, um, we really do have the possibility of a big three in the future. We do, because these three guys can make that. That's how good all three of them are to me. All three of them, okay? So uh, I don't know how they're going to do it. Somebody mentioned, a couple of y'all mentioned a good thought. See, when Randall and Obi play together and there's no big guy in the middle, like in other words, when Randall's playing the five and Obi's playing the four, it doesn't work out. 
And there's a lot of reasons for that, but it doesn't. But when you add a rim protector, especially Mitch Rob or Hartenstein, to those, they there's a different crew. They play good. So with a Mitch Rob, Obi could play the three in my view. When you have Mitch Rob, he could play the three. And then you got Grimes already out there, who's a high level defender. So if you have Randall and and Obi out there, that would work. Actually, that would work. My problem would come with RJ because RJ's really, we don't know. Because look, I'm going to tell you straight. I don't want nobody taking Grimes' a spot. If you're going to put Grimes on Mob Deep, you better be bringing me Kawhi or something like Kawhi. I'm not, or Doncic. I'm not sitting Grimes because we traded for Jeremy Grant or Bridges. I'm not sitting Grimes. See? So I don't know what they're going to do. But I'm not sitting Quentin Grimes. Quentin Grimes is is the starter. He needs to be cemented in as the starter for the next 10 years. Period. We found one. We got one right here. Okay. And so as long as he can stay healthy, he starts. All right. And so I, I, I'm not trying to sit him for anybody. Like I said, you bringing me a Kawhi Leonard, PG3, PG13, you bringing me, um, you know, Luka Doncic. Oh, okay. Then I can understand that because those are star superstar players. Okay. Okay. But other than that, no, not for Jeremy Grant, not for McCall Bridges, not for KP, not for anybody. I'm not sitting Grimes. Grimes starts. Okay. So that's why we have an RJ dilemma if we're looking at it like that. Either you're going to have an OB dilemma or you're going to have an RJ dilemma. You, you're going to have one of those. Okay. And and some people keep not getting it. The Knicks need to keep him. Yeah, they need to keep him. Well, why don't the Knicks keep him? Because he might want to leave. Some of y'all just not getting that. It ain't in the Knicks' hands. Okay, it's in Obi's hands. Obi said, I want to start. Guess what? He's not going to resign. So you better get what you can from now. Okay, that's how this game works. This is the league. This is the league in 2023 with the new CBA. All right, everybody got to get paid. That's how it works. See, so this is Obi and IQ's decision. It's for, so the Knicks got to make a decision. Now, I will say this. Last year, they were talking, my understanding is they were talking to Utah about R.J. Mitchell, uh, Donovan Mitchell trade. They were talking about that. Now, the Don ultimately walked away from it, which he should have, with a whole bunch of picks and all that. Now, by the way, y'all, and y'all still, some of y'all still hung up on this OG nutsack. Let me explain something to you. You realize dealing with M M Messiah Ujiri is just as bad as dealing with Danny Ainge? You know Messiah Jr. is going to rape you? You know he's already raped the Knicks? And OG ain't worth all that. He, I think he's better than RJ, but okay. He ain't worth all you no know, picks. I'd rather go get Grant. Okay, and again, I ain't sitting grind, so I don't know. Somebody got to make a decision. So either it's going to be OB or RJ. One of them is leaving this summer. Okay. And I, quite frankly, I love both of them. They both drafted by New York Knicks organization, developed by New York Knicks organization. I hate to lose either one of them, but that's how great this team has come in. This management team has come in and drafted. This is how great they have drafted that we talking about this, that we have to talk about this. That's why I said, I really, I love Jalen Brunson, but I'm telling you, they drafted so well, we could go on with our IQ and be fine. We really could. But okay, we got Brunson now. So they got to make a decision on the RJ Obi situation. Obi is 25. Okay? So I believe they're going to keep RJ and trade Obi. I would actually, my druthers, and some of y'all still don't hear properly, my druthers would be for them to keep Obi. He's cheaper, he's a more complete player. He's more athletic. He's Obi. I'd rather keep Obi and play him at the three. Honestly. Because really, they're not trading Randall either. If they were trading Julius Randall, I'd keep Obi and RJ. We drafted both of them. Keep them both. But I'm trying to balance what I want Knicks Nation versus what I really believe the Knicks organization is going to do. What I really believe they're going to do is trade either RJ or Obi 
and probably it'll be Obi. They should trade RJ, but they'll probably trade Obi. Okay, and they'll combine Obi with Evan to get off of Evan's contract. I think that's what they're going to do. I'd rather them keep Obi. Rather than do that. Okay, and some of y'all immediately thinking, go get superstar. We don't need a superstar. This is how good the Knicks are right now. Okay, we don't need a superstar. It'd be dangerous to get one because then you have to start breaking up what you've carefully crafted in this team. See what the Nets did? The Nets built a team with, you know, re reclamation projects and young players. Uh, they built a playoff team with Kenny Atkinson. They broke it all up to get Durant and Kyrie. Okay? Messed themselves up for a couple of seasons. Smart management, they went and fleeced. And I mean, fleece depths to go get Dorian Finney-Smith and um, Dinwiddie. Then they went and got McCall Bridges from Phoenix for Durant's. They really did themselves right. And then they drafted Nick Claxton, who was going to be their center of the future. They got a nice squad and they, and they got the veterans they have brought in as bench pieces. They did very well. Okay. So, but you want to be careful with breaking up what you've carefully crafted and built over time, which is what the Knicks did with this core. Um, people are now looking at it, you know, people that are short-sighted are now looking at, oh, we could trade all of them now. No, we can win with all of them. Okay. The OB IQ situation is a special situation because we're so stacked. Both of these guys are NBA starter level players. They're not going to want to sit on the Knicks bench for the next few years, unless A, they're getting paid a lot of money, or B, they end up starting. Okay? That's the situation. With Jalen Brunson being 26, he's going to be here. So IQ ain't starting. So he's the category, you got to dump a boatload of money on him and get him to stay. Show him that you love him. Pay that man. Okay? With OB, it's not going to be the boatload of money. He wants to start. He'll get his money once he started, either with the Knicks or without the Knicks. And there's a number of teams that he could start for. Again, I mentioned Miami, who has no real power forward. Okay? They would love to get an Obi Top. I don't know what they give us for him, but they would love to get an Obi Top. Okay? So, and there's other teams like that. Uh, so I don't know what they're going to do. But for now, we got them all. And for tonight, they're starting. Let's see if we can beat New Orleans. Y'all have a good Friday, a good weekend. So 